This is Samuel from Full Potential Learning Academy. Today, we're going to ask ourselves, what is the converse of the Pythagorean Theorem? You may already know the Pythagorean Theorem, but let's briefly cover it. The Pythagorean Theorem is a formula we use with right triangles to show the relationship between the legs of a right triangle and the hypotenuse. This is expressed with a squared plus b squared equals c squared with A and B representing the legs and C representing the hypotenuse. The Pythagorean theorem can be stated as thus. If a triangle is a right triangle, then the relationship between the legs and the hypotenuse is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The converse of a theorem is rewording a conditional statement. Conditional statements are worded as if P then Q. Its converse would be if Q, then P. If both a conditional statement and its converse are true, then the statement can be reworded as a biconditional. Biconditionals are worded as P if and only if Q. With this knowledge, let us analyze our previous conditional statement. If a triangle is a right triangle, then the relationship between the legs and the hypotenuse is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's now formulate the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. If the relationship between the legs and the hypotenuse of a triangle is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the triangle is a right triangle. Ask yourself, is the converse statement strictly and necessarily true? In this case, the answer is yes. Right triangles always have this relationship between the legs and the hypotenuse. And likewise, when a triangle's sides have this relationship, it must necessarily be true. If both the conditional statement and its converse are true, then the statements can also be expressed as a biconditional. P, if and only if, Q. In the case of this example, a triangle is a right triangle if and only if the relationship between the legs is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Since the converse of the Pythagorean theorem is true, we can use it when solving proofs. When you see that the sum of the square of each leg is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, we can therefore conclude that the given triangle is a right triangle. Let's consider an example. Suppose that we must prove that a given triangle is a right triangle. No angle measures are given, but the sides are given as follows. 3, 4, and 5. Remember that the longest side is always the hypotenuse, C. Therefore, C equals 5. The legs are 3 and 4, which we can assign to A and B respectively. Remember that A and B are interchangeable as either leg. If we square each leg and then add them to equal the square of the hypotenuse, we get A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Replacing our variables, that would be 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Calculating the squares, that would be 9 plus 16 equals 25, which is equivalent to 25 equals 25. Since the Pythagorean theorem works on this triangle, we can therefore conclude that the triangle is a right triangle. The reason given would be converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Keep in mind that although the converse of the Pythagorean theorem is true, Converses of other theorem and proofs may not necessarily be so. Make sure to always check. If you're interested in more videos from Full Potential Learning Academy, stay tuned. We cover math, English, verbal, and everything in between.